you see what his real hair looks like? I don't think he has any. His head looked bald underneath. Thank you for letting me know. Give me a call if you remember anything else. So... Oh, can I not go into there just now? <gasps> oh no. Am I not meant to go into there? <laughs> Top end. Oh. We're at the CDI HQ. Go to your office, but I want to do this first. Beard was red though. There's still no submit button. I am going to go get some coffee um, and maybe a quick bio brick. I shall be right back. Okay, we're back again. Oh, let me go into the light screen here. <clears throat> Right, we we can't go on the train again, can we? I want to go to the harbour. I guess we have to do this. Go to your office. Hopefully it'll give us a chance to go back to... Oh, right. I was just seeing if there was anything that way. But there wasn't. We shall go up the stairs. I was looking for the fog option at the end there. Is that a news thing? <coughs> the wealth gap increases, shows no sign of something. A new study at the Institute for Planetary Equality has concluded that both the wealth and income gaps between Gavia's rich and poor has further increased since a similar study was published five years ago. The disparity between upper and lower layer citizens in Gara's centre districts is especially striking. In 1834, ground level inhabitants made an average approximately 20% of an upper's income, which decreased further to a little over 15% last year. The problem is only amplified by an accelerating gentrification process that is making affordable living space increasingly hard to come by in parts of the lower layers. Those who can afford to stay are often there by choice rather than necessity. A mix of artists, surveillance skeptics, academics and other small groups for whom the lower layers are the preferred living space. This is not to say that life for uppers is always easy. The study has also shown that the increasing disparities in CEO pay to worker pay, 400 to 1 the average percentage of income that goes to rent, 40%, and other metrics affect virtually all parts of society. The CDI. They're not asking who I am. This is a floor plan. Basement, interrogation, second floor, unit. Third floor, chief, fourth conference. So I need the third floor. Hey, Neil. Hey, Seado. It's good to see you. This case really has me on edge. Yeah, me too. The chief wanted me to tell you that we invited two special guests. They're waiting for you in the conference room upstairs. Who? Why? The CEOs of Millex and Dyson Enterprises. They had dinner with Barney right before he was shot. Millex and Dyson, as in probably the biggest mining companies in the world? Honestly, you probably don't even need to say mining for that to be accurate. Holy shit. 
wish someone had told me earlier. I'm not exactly prepared for this. Sorry, I just got word from the chief. That reminds me, he also wants to talk to you after you've questioned them. Alright, thanks for letting me know. So, I presume he's... Well, the conference room is on the top floor. There's an arrow to let us know which way to go. <laughs> Good morning, gentlemen. I am Neil Conrad. Good morning, Mr. Conrad. Abbott Dyson, Dyson Enterprises. Good morning, Dan Kim. Milex. Sorry to keep you waiting. Let's get right to the point then. I have a busy day ahead of me. Uh, yes, of course. The two of you had dinner with Mr. Barney last night, correct? Yes. And you're aware of what happened after he left? We were just told it's terrible. It's a tragedy. Our upcoming negotiations with Barney are of utmost importance to our relationship with Drovia. Not that you had any real interest in negotiating. What are you implying? I'm not implying anything. I am saying very clearly that you only stand to gain from this tragedy. With Barney dead, any real hope for Drovian independence goes out the window. Which means we maintain the status quo where you already have all you want. That's preposterous. Was I or was I not at the negotiating table? If everything had been hunky dory, I wouldn't I would have stayed on Milan. That doesn't change the fact that the only ones who will suffer from this will once again be the Drovian people. Oh come on, as if you give a damn about the Drovian people. The only aspect of Drovian independence you care about is your prospect of selling Telenium to whoever you want. Okay, okay, your competitors, this is, a this is a difficult situation. I get it, but mostly interested in last night. Let me think. Don't mind me asking, why were you at dinner with him in the first place? The mining business is an important pillar of the system-wide economy. We talk to politicians sometimes. So was it a lobbying thing? And what was it just the three of you? Sorry, and was it just the three of you? Just the three of us and our staff. I wouldn't say lobbying necessarily, really more of a social event. Of course you sometimes talk business at those. I imagine you do. So where are there important business things to talk about? We mostly save those for the trade summit, which I suppose will be cut short now without its protagonist. I see. Let me think. Did Mr. Barney have any enemies? Anyone that stands to gain from maintaining the status quo, I suppose. Or yeah, or maybe anyone who's happy that all of Drovia will be really riled up over this. There was no real chance they wouldn't have gotten their independence from these negotiations anyway. But maybe now they'll revolt and just take it. Ever thought about that? I don't think much about conspiracy theories, no. Nobody concrete. Maybe someone disgruntled or someone who overly threatened him. No, but to be fair, veiled threats are much more common in politics anyway. Any veiled threats then? None that I'm aware of. Me neither. I see. Let me think. Did Mr. Barney seem strange last night, maybe on edge or paranoid? No, but I've never met him before, so I wouldn't know what he's normally like. What about you, Mr. Dyson? I knew him quite well. We travelled here from Drovia on the same ship. He behaved normally last night, I would say. I see. Alright, thank you for your time. Could you give me your cell contacts? I might need to get back to you in case I have more questions. <clears throat> Why not? Of course, there you go. I 
Right, so we need to go talk to the chief. Let's see what he's got to say. Chief's office was downstairs, wasn't it? Wasn't that way? What well, was? Agent Conrad. Good morning. Good morning, Chief. Sayat had told me you wanted to talk to me. I do. Let's not beat around the bush. Agent Long already filled me in over the phone, but he told me you didn't want to reveal the escort agency's client. Yeah, about that. I'm not completely certain that my suspicion is correct, but... Are you going to make me say it? So it's you. It is me. Why don't you tell Agent Long you jumped the chain of command? <clears throat> I, uh, I guess I did. Thank you for telling me first, Conrad. So what makes you think a hostile agent was involved? It seems like the woman who paid you a visit wasn't the real escort. She had a procedure done to look very similar to her. She also seems to be in contact with Barney's murderer. We have a recording of their conversation. It seems probable that she tried to take advantage of your connection to the escort agency. I see. Any idea what her objective might be? Did you notice anything suspicious when you met her? Nothing comes to mind. She didn't seem particularly interested in my professional life. Did anything go missing since she visited you? <clears throat> Sounds like you already have a suspicion. Out with it. The fake escort talked about some data she stole. I think from you. Is that what the sniper is going to hand over at Joa's Plaza? Exactly. I don't have any relevant data at home, except on my cell, of course. Maybe she got a chance to access your cell without you noticing. Maybe. I will have to talk about that with my own superiors first. One more thing, Conrad. You didn't talk to a girl named Sheila Novak, did you? I did. She wanted to know if you were alright. Might want to give her a call. Is she okay? Yeah, she's fine. Looks like she finally has all the money she needs to go to university. That's good to hear. We have, a focus. We have to focus on the sniper now. The handover has taken place in less than three hours. Let's get down to the mission briefing. They're waiting for us. How was it talking to those two CEOs? They don't seem to like each other very much. What did you expect? Top mining guy from Drovia and top mining guy from Gara? They're probably mortal enemies. I expected them to be less open about it. I'd think that rich and influential folks would be more reserved. But the truth is, many of them are the most brazen and least classy individuals in the system. <clears throat> now that we're complete, let's recap what we found out so far. Our suspect goes by Diaz, but his real name seems to be Boyt. He is still at large. He shot Barney around 1.39 this morning from the top floor of the Secure Hotel. Shortly after, he was picked up by an unknown accomplice who dropped him off at the lower layers. That's when he switched to the stolen boat as his second getaway vehicle. He docked it at Martuna Harbour where his ID was picked up nearby a train station. He then paid a woman called Zora a visit. She seems to be involved in another scheme that might be linked to her case. Earlier this week she attacked and tied up an escort girl named Leela Clark to temporarily assume her identity. She went to see an important client in her stead and stole some data from him. Sniper convinced her to give him the stick containing that data. He will pass it on to an unknown third party at Joe's Plaza at 0830. Our plan is to intervene and catch the sniper and his associates red handed. We're going to place plain clothes agents in the cafes and snipers on the rooftops. The operation will be overseen by Agent Kumar, head of the response team. <clears throat> He's on the second floor speaking this, so I was just looking <laughs> Conrad and I will be watching from the sidelines, ready to go in if needed. Joe's Plaza is a popular place with lots of breakfast joints. It will be swarming with people. We have to be very careful not to endanger any civilians. Questions? 
How will we identify the sniper? Conrad has been collecting data on what he looks like. We have to rely on that. Do we have any details on the woman the sniper visited? Not really. She was surprised to see our perp. It seems like the meeting wasn't part of the original plan. We're not sure if he lied to her to get the stick. If so, that's possible that he's not planning on taking it to the handover at all. Alright then, Conrad, go ahead and submit that sheet on what the sniper looks like. Take your time to go over all the logs and evidence. We only have one chance to get this right. Well, I'm pretty sure that's right. He's bald, he has a viola case. And his beard was red. Probably have a cut arm. I'm going to go for that. Okay, let's get ready. Jaros Plaza, 0828. Keep Gara pure. T minus 90 seconds. Dam is more crowded there than I had expected. I don't think our snipers would get a clear shot. Let's hope we don't need them. Did they ever tell you story how I joined the CDI? Yeah, you saved Mayor Glover's life when you were still a policeman. I wasn't on duty that day, but when I saw that guy pull out a gun, I didn't test it. That's what landed me a job in the CDI. Shit, I was so nervous when the chief invited me for an interview. Nothing had gotten me that nervous again in the 15 years since until today. If we don't book this guy today, someone will have to take the fall for Barney's murder and we are first in line. We will find out soon enough. I've always wanted to join the CDI, and it seemed like that ship had sailed already. But here I am, because I've always been on the side of justice. And that's why we're going to get through this as well. Good things come to good people, eh? I'm reading the text that's appearing down here. Green shirt has been joined by a young woman. Can we go? No. It's going down any second. Let's focus. What are we doing? Just got to watch this now. Since we can't leave here, he's headed towards the fountain. Can I get an audio feed? Not close enough yet. Picking up the pace. He seems to be moving towards the man sitting right ahead. shaking hands, very likely to be the accomplice. Alright, Bailey, move in and make the arrest. Get the suspect and his accomplice, be discreet. Doesn't make more noise than you need to. I think they noticed you. Someone else got up at the south, at the cafe south of the fountain. Shit, they're making a run for it. Maybe we had the wrong target. No. Alpha, stop them. Go, go, go. Watch out, there's a gun. Follow guy. Is 
presume we went this way. Where did Gary go? Why don't you think that's his car? We got them. What the hell happened? Did we have the wrong guy? We started the rest of the mine described at the fountain. But then someone in this cafe got spooked and started to make a run for it. I happened to be standing nearby and went after him. When I got closer, his accomplice pulled a gun on me. Things got messy, we got them both, but Agent Reed also caught a bullet. Medics, move your asses over here, start. We got three wounded, one agent, and two suspects. Units surrounding the area, keep an eye out on the crowds. Lock down the area, make sure not to cause more panic. Conrad, I don't have to tell you this didn't go well over well at all. So what did we get wrong? Once the adrenaline had worn off, the uncomfortable train seat and glaring sunlight were the only things stopping me from falling asleep. My implants had been injecting me with a substance keeping me alert and focused all night, and now I came crashing down hard. I seemed to remember glances from the people around me. I wondered if there was blood on my clothes, but I couldn't be bothered to check. Agent Reed had been transported off in an ambulance. He had lost a lot of blood and was going in and out of consciousness. The projectile had pierced his vest somehow. I couldn't help but feel like this wouldn't have happened if I had submitted an accurate description of the sniper. At least we caught him and his associate. Whether dead or alive remained to be seen. I wondered if this was the beginning of the end of the case, or just its beginning. I finally got up at my stop and left the train only to suddenly wake up in my seat again and realize it had been a dream. I decided to stand next to the door for the rest of the ride. What's happening there? A cool breeze cut into the train cart and through the haze of fatigue when the doors opened. I considered visiting Cat, suddenly feeling an urge to inhale the woody, slightly dusty air in our old apartment. Cat had filled it with what she affectionately called real things. She loved leather, cloth, paper, and plants, and hated the clean metallic surfaces at my apartment. Sometimes I did too. So I wonder what we got wrong with there. We need to walk home and we need to talk to Cat, which is optional. Did he have a Viola case then? I don't know. I wonder what the real thing was. The real description. What we got wrong. How do we get home this way? Oh, there's the bistro. Can we go into the bistro? No. <laughs> Dumpling kitchen. Dead end, right? Let's head back the other way. I'm sure it was along here somewhere. That's her there, isn't it? Was that my, the daughter? Oh, no, it is cut. Oh, hi Neil, what are you doing here? I just wanted to say hello. To you. Really? 
who are you? It's nice to see you too. Sorry, I'm just surprised. You want coffee? No, thanks. I'm actually headed to bed. I'm just coming back from work. It's been a long night. Oh, that's rough. Wait, you didn't have anything to do with that shootout that's all over the news right now, did you? Actually, I did, but it was practically over by the time I got there. Oh my god, are you okay? They wouldn't have let me go if I had caught a bullet. You don't say, I mean, are you emotionally okay? Was I ever? Okay, I get it. You don't want to talk about it. No, it's fine. Sorry, I'm okay. Thanks for asking. Uh, what was that whole thing about? Nobody seems to know yet. Oh, I hit the wrong thing. <laughs> Barney's dead. He was killed last night. The shootout is this morning was us confronting the suspect. <gasps> no, tell me you're joking. I'm not. I don't know much more right now. It's an ongoing investigation. You can't talk to anyone else about it, okay? Of course. Shit, Neil, what if Drovia retaliates? I mean, I understand that they want their independence and all, but... If our investigation goes well, we'll have to, some results soon that will help de-escalate the situation. You're not blaming yourself and your unit for this, are you? I'm sure you did everything to protect Barney. There's always a remaining risk. That's just how it is. Neil, I'm sorry. I've really got to go. I have to catch the next train if I don't want to be late for work. If you still want to talk tonight, we can grab a drink. I'll have to head right back to HQ as soon as I'm no longer a sleep-deprived zombie. But I like that, once things have calmed down a little. i got to run now. Hold on, one more thing. Laura wants to go to a party at one of her classmates' place tonight. I'm not sure if I should let her. She's only 14. But I feel like she has a hard time connecting with her peers, so this could be a good thing. What do you think? Let her have some fun, Laura. It's, sorry. Laura is very mature for her age. I'm sure she'll take care of herself. Yeah, you're probably right. I shouldn't be so anxious. See you in the other. Please don't get yourself shot. So what do we do now? Oh, I need to go over here, do I? No? Walk home. So this, of course, this isn't, isn't our house, is it? But I thought he stayed here. Sometimes. We can't go out on the balcony. Okay, let's go try and find our house again. are talking. While everyone these eyes were trained on Barney and Robertson at the trading summit's first day, a few other notable discussions were going on in the background. It was still to play the mining giants Dan Kim and Abbott Dyson got together in person for the first time in their lives. Their relationship is tense. While Dyson extracts the majority of Drovia's telenium, its profits are severely undercut by its status as a colonial entity. By contrast, Milix is not only able to sell its ores directly to places like Famous and New Joran, but it also buys up Talonium from companies like Dyson to resell it at a higher price. The ore prices from Gara pays us have not changed in a long time while costs steadily increased, Dyson complained in a recent interview with the Drovian Trade Journal. At this rate, we won't be able to turn any profit at all in a few years. Milik's CEO Kim assured that his company would critically examine the situation, but added that the margins are not that big. The idea that we exploit other mining companies based in Drovia is not based on reality. Whether anything will change between the two companies remains to be seen. However thin they want us to believe their margins to be, it is important to keep in mind that both CEOs are billionaires with a history of underpaying their workers, cutting corners and initiating mass layoffs whenever their companies have faced financial problems in the past. Where's our house? I can't remember. Let's 
must be back this way somewhere. <laughs> Oops. Walk home. I'd, I'd like to remember where my home is. <laughs> I just thought that was his home. He stays here, doesn't he? Or did he have another house? I really can't remember. That looks like a staircase, but you can't go up it. That looks like a kid's bedroom, doesn't it? That's a proper bed. Where was his house? It's not this way. Home upgrades. You can't go up there. That was a shot. That's a dead end. Well, he can get through here. Oh. Hey, oh, it's Anthony. Hey, wait a minute. Huh? I know you. You're the guy who came to our flat yesterday. You told that old scumbag to leave my sister alone. I did. That was really nice of you, man. Didn't think you uppers would help out a savant. She left this morning, chasing her dream. Glad I could help. I have to get home now. Have a nice day. Sure, sure. Bawatana's blessings, man. Thanks. Uh, you too. Oh, we can't go this way. Oh, it is over here. I was remembering right. Here we go. In the slow lift. I remember it now. I got into the elevator and leaned against a wall. I was so tired in that moment that my reflex of emotional repression whenever I saw Cat didn't seem to work anymore. It hit me with an unusual clarity that, even a decade after it had ended, I hadn't ever fully let go of her. I wasn't sure what to make of it, whether to be happy or to finally push myself to it. I concluded that I would probably just go back to repressing it altogether. I wonder if our door system's fixed. Welcome. It's working. Hey Horace, how's it going? to the bedroom. He still hasn't made his bed. So I wonder what we're going to be doing now. Waking up in the early evening was disorienting. I sat up on my bed and allowed the memories from the previous night to pour back in. Banny's body, the hotel, Lila, the shootout. I tried to put it all in an order that made sense and got on my way back to work. A hint of the good mood that had overcome me outside of the villa returned. Once again, it stemmed from what had made me join the CDI many years ago. The feeling of doing something instead of taking a back seat and waiting for death. There was a time when a lack of purpose threatened to consume me, lurking underneath meaningless daily routines and self-doubt sabotaging everything I did. Walking among the people outside, I felt even more alienated than usual. It was like they lived in another reality. Many were just getting out of work, looking to do some shopping, meet a friend, have a drink. Maybe I would find my way back to that reality one day. I wanted to, yet at the same time hated the thought of it. wasn't letting me into the lift. <clears throat> Obviously until that was done. I 
the world's slowest lift. So I wonder what we're going to be doing. Any news to pick up? No. No news. Nope. Missed. <laughs> mm, what's happening? It's gone into auto mode. Why is all the screens gone? Hello fellow citizens, we are the Liberators, defenders of progress, freedom and reason. These values have been integral to our society for centuries, but lately they have increasingly come under threat. Religious radicals calling themselves the Savant Front are aiming to establish a theocratic government on Drovia. <clears throat> the savant faith is based on superstition and rejects science to the point where it endangers the lives of everyone under its thumb. We all saw four decades ago today what happens <clears throat> when the savant state is left to its own devices. We can't let history repeat itself. We demand President Robertson end this madness now. We'll stop to all the independence talks and reinstate full Garian rule. We removed the radical savant Joseph Barney to get it started. If you do not start implementing measures to meet our demands, more savant lives will be spent to protect our collective future. The savant population on Gar will be taken hostage until the Garian population on Drovia is guaranteed its freedom. We must stand up for what? Await our next move within 48 hours. It won't be as silent as the first one. <clears throat> Conrad, did you see that? Yeah. It was on all screens across the city. Come to HQ immediately. Do, 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 do. is waiting up there. Not going to talk to Gary first. Gary, what are you doing out here? Thinking? Strange how the city looks the same as always, as if nothing happened. That's a good thing, right? Quagan Liberators, ridiculous name. From whom are they liberating us? From a handful of superstitious lures? Pathetic bullshit. Every single institution on this planet upholds the freedom of our people and their values. It's not like we're letting some religious fanatics take over the solar system. And somehow we didn't know anything about these hookers and before they everybody else. One more thing we missed. The fact that we messed up at Joe's Plaza doesn't help either. They had to put the sniper in a coma. The other guy's dead. It's going to be hard to make progress with no one left to interrogate. Do we at least know who they are? We scanned them, the sniper's a complete ghost. He got a fake ID right before he checked into the hotel. The other guy's a businessman from Drovia. His name is Abraham Gonzalez. He's the CEO of a company called PowerUp. They manufacture titanium based batteries. Both the guy and his company seem harmless, no criminal record. Strange, why would someone from Drovia 
help an anti-Drovian terror organization. I have no clue. What about the woman? Any updates on her? Nothing so far, but we do have another lead. Sato is trying to find out where the announcement was broadcast from earlier. Maybe he's found out something already. Why don't you go inside and ask? He's in outside our... Bleh. He's in our office. I'll catch up with you in a minute. Will do. Did we secure that drive the sniper tried to hand over? Yeah. And what's on it? About that, the chief said the attorney general seized it. She said she had to evaluate if we have the required clearance level. The AG? Are you kidding me? That's a crucial piece of evidence. We need it. I suppose they'll let us in on it soon. There's no time to waste. We have to assume the next attack is less than 48 hours away. The higher-ups know what they're doing. You think? Let it go, Conrad. Go talk to the chief yourself if you have a problem. Ah, and one more thing. There's an article about Gonzales' company in the news today. You might want to download it and have a look. Uh, this is a news thing here. It's no secret that the Drovian based Power Up, one of the planet's most important battery producers, has been facing monetary difficulties for several months now. Technological developments over the last few years made Telenium the most efficient material to build high performance batteries, overtaking Lithium and others by far when it comes to battery life and weight. However, since Drovia is a Garian colony with no economic per autonomy, Pyrup doesn't have the right to buy its Telenium directly from the mining companies based on Drovia. The latter are forced to sell the resource to Garvia, which in turn sells the Telenium to all companies processing the material, including those on Drovia. In light of this development, it has become increasingly difficult for non garian companies to keep prices competitive. This has put power up, like many others, in an increasingly difficult spot. It did not come as a surprise, therefore, when its CEO and founder Abraham Gonzalez publicly supported the cause of the Drovian fight for independence last week. As a representative of the Association of Drovian Electric Companies, he accompanied Minister Barney on his business trip to Gara to defend the interests of his industry during the discussions between Drovia and Gara. Offices. Basements interrogation. Is our office not in here? Yeah. That's site to up there, isn't it? The chief's up there. Even the nail. Hey Saito, how's it going? I'm not going to lie, that video was a little upsetting. I mean, I know my religion is strange to some people in Gara, but an anti-savant terror group? That's something else. Should I be worried about wearing my scarf in public now? I think those people are idiots, and I'm sure the vast majority of Garians agree with me. I know. Hey, I also have some good news. I found out where the Liberator's video was broadcast. It's a company called AdSpot. They own most of the billboards in the city. You want an ad played, you go to them. I took a shot in the dark and checked ongoing police operations in the centre. And what do you know, someone at AdSpot made an emergency call tonight. Apparently an intruder forced their way into the server room and gained access to our computer. I made contact with the local police department. They sent two officers who secured the scene and are waiting for you to come have a look. Fast as lightning, Sato. Great work. Well done, Conrad. And I will go to the ad spot and have a look around. We really need to get ahead of this one and prevent another attack. Why don't you follow up on some leads while we're gone? Trace the perp's payment to the hotel as well as the mysterious transaction to the escort. And maybe we can find out where the sniper's accomplice got her face changed. Conrad, I'm taken off from the roof. Want to hitch a ride? You know I don't. It was worth a try. Meet you at ad spot then. 
I need some fresh air. I'll come with you, guy. I wonder who that is up in the chief's office. I think we can go talk to the chief. Oh, well done. It's this way. It's the attorney general. Yeah, I need a quick bio break. I might grab some juice or something. Since I finished my coffee. I shall be right back. Okay, back again. Attorney General, and you can rest assured that we know what we are doing. I didn't question that, but that data is one of the most important pieces of evidence we have right now. The Liberator said that their next attack will take place in 48 hours, that's pretty damn soon. We really need to take into account everything we've got if we want to catch these guys in time. I already told you that the contents of that stick won't help you find them. How can you say that? Having a better idea of your enemy's motivation is always important. And you know that. You yourself were director of the CDI for over a decade. Liam, please. I've got a lot on my plate right now. I don't have time to discuss this over and over again. The data is about something that happened during your time at the CDI, isn't it? What are you talking about? I looked at my cell's history and saw which folder that woman navigated to. I don't have the access rights, but I'd really like to know what is in there. There was a lot going on in 1800. Let me be very clear, Liam. I can't work with a chief who doesn't trust my judgement and questions my orders. Been doing this for a long time, Amelia. I deeply respect everything you've done for the Garian state, but as a CDI chief, I see it as my duty to protect all Garian citizens. And I'm sure that's in your best interest as well. I don't have time for this now. I'll let you know what the next steps are going to be. Let's see what the chief's got to say. Good evening, chief. Agent Conrad, how can I help you? About that data on the storage module. Gary told me we don't have access yet. Yeah, that's correct. Honestly, I don't understand why parts of the puzzle are being kept from us. It makes no sense. I agree. Listen, Conrad, I'm currently trying to find out what that data is about and why we don't get access. Don't you have a suspicion at least? Do you know what was on your cell when it was accessed? The data was on the CDI network, and apparently it was something I don't normally have access to. Until I know what exactly we're looking at, I'd like to ask you to respect that chain of command. I... Uh, I'm getting an important call in a second. We can talk later. Enter the train. Oh, we've got an email. Dear Mr. Conrad, an update is available for your following body enhancements, eyes plus, thighs plus, chest plus. Please make sure to download and install the latest firmware from our website within the next 10 days. The Beyond Body Team. So we are just going to the train. arrived are we? <laughs> okay. I uh, can't go that way. I 
keep, keep forgetting these are stairs. They just don't look like stairs sometimes. Right. No, we need to wait to get on the train. Here's me just not paying any attention. I need on through the train. If anybody's watching and doesn't already follow or follow, it would be greatly appreciated. Helps the channel out. During the train ride, every screen in the city had been playing news reports about the Liberator's announcement. They were the first violent domestic terror group with a political motive in recent Garian history. But there was something else that struck me about them. This wasn't the usual M.O. of a conservative group trying to maintain the status quo. It felt much more like revolutionaries hoping to effect change by resorting to drastic measures. He got his hands in his pockets, he does, doesn't he? Zoom we're going this way. Where were we meant to be going? To find odd spot. There was an arrow came up there, wasn't there? No. I just thought I saw an arrow. Well, I guess we're going this way, where the blue arrow is pointing. Oh, smashed window. Glass. There's a lot more glass lying outside than in. So, somebody made it look like it had been broken into, but it was actually from inside. Mm. Officer Wong. And he seems pretty nervous about his boss. Hey Conrad, this is Officer Wong, my colleague, Neil Conrad. Thank you for filling me in, officer. We'll take it from here.